What might the world look like if some of the most ambitious construction projects ever proposed were actually completed? What if the most drastic idea of rebuilding Berlin in Adolf Hitler's time had been realized? Today we'll talk more about that. Welcome aboard our journey through time, back to the period when Berlin was almost transformed into a megalopolis called Germania. The Germania project was born from the minds of two men, Adolf Hitler, then Chancellor and leader of the Nazi Party, and Albert Speer, the chief architect of the Third Reich. The project was to transform Berlin, considered the cultural and political heart of Germany, into a monumental metropolis designed to reflect and express Nazi ideology and power. The Nazi Party entered the political scene in Germany in 1933. It was a time of chaos and uncertainty. Hitler and his party promised to stabilize the country and restore it to its former glory. The party also liked to use architecture and design as a means to express its political and ideological message. And so the Germania project was born. Albert Speer, who became Hitler's favorite architect, was commissioned to design and plan the transformation of Berlin. Speer undertook to create a city that would rival other historic metropolitan centers such as Rome or Paris but would also express Nazi values and ideals. The plans were ambitious and monumental, with many grandiose buildings that were to surpass any existing structures of the time. But as it happens, the path to their realization was not easy. The visualization of Germania was literally titanic. The heart of the city was to be the Great East-West Axis, a boulevard almost 5 kilometers long that would lead from the Palace of World Congresses to the Arc de Triomphe. One of the most ambitious elements of this plan was the Volkschau, a giant arch designed to hold up to 180,000 people. This structure was designed to resemble the Roman Pantheon, but was much larger. Its vault was to reach a height of up to 290 meters and a diameter of 250 meters, surpassing all existing structures. The triumphal arch was another important element of Germania's design. It was to be 120 meters high and 170 meters wide, with a space in the center that could hold up to 15,000 people. This arch was designed as an expression of Nazi victory and power. In addition, Speer designed a number of other buildings, including the new Reich Chancellery, grand public buildings and wide boulevards. All of these structures were to be constructed of white marble and steel and were intended to create an impression of permanence and domination. But these designs were more than grandiose plans. They were meant to express the Nazi vision of power, greatness and eternity. Every detail, from the choice of materials to the placement of the buildings, was carefully considered to reflect Nazi ideology. But such ambitious and massive structures raised questions about the technical and logistical challenges. And these became one of the main reasons why the Germania project remained unrealized. Although Germania's proposals were undoubtedly ambitious, they encountered a number of significant obstacles. Imagine, to realize such a monumental project would have required an enormous amount of materials and human labor. More than 13 million cubic meters of concrete and over 200,000 tons of steel would have been needed for the Volkschau alone. Such a quantity of materials and resources was almost impossible to come by, even for a country as large and industrially advanced as Germany at the time. Moreover, the logistics of transforming the entire city were extremely complex. Entire neighborhoods would have to be destroyed and their inhabitants relocated. Streets would have to be completely rebuilt to fit the new plan. All of this would require considerable time and enormous effort. But even these technical and logistical problems were not the only obstacles. Another major problem was the war itself. After the outbreak of World War II, all resources and efforts were redirected to military purposes. The Germania project was thus put on the back burner. In 1943, after several years of war and growing opposition from the Allies, work on the Germania project was finally halted. The project, which was meant to symbolize Nazi power and permanence, was left unfinished. Although the Germania project was never fully realized, its consequences and legacy are still evident. 
The first and most visible consequence was the damage that was caused in preparation for its implementation. During the preparations for its construction, entire neighborhoods were destroyed, thousands of people were forced to move, and enormous resources were expended. Although some of these buildings were later rebuilt, many were lost forever. This was particularly tragic in the case of historic buildings and cultural monuments. Another consequence worth mentioning is the psychological and symbolic legacy of the project. The Nazis used architecture as a powerful propaganda tool. Germania was designed to express the Nazi ideology of power, greatness and eternity. Although the project was never completed, its vision and ideals remained in the minds of many people and influenced their view of the Nazi regime. Finally, it is worth noting that although the Germania project was discontinued, some of its elements were implemented. For example, Spears Light Axis, which was intended as a navigation system for pilots, was actually built and is still visible today, known as the East-West Axis or Strasse de 17 Juni. But many other planned buildings, including the Folkschau and the Arc de Triomphe, remained forever on paper. Germania thus remains as a reminder of ambitions that exceeded the possibilities of its time, and as a warning of the dangers of misusing architecture for propaganda purposes. Although the Germania project is known for its monumental and ambitious plans, there are a few lesser-known facts and details worth mentioning. The first of these interesting facts is how Speer approached the design. Speer was famous for his collapse theory, which he used in the design of the buildings of Germania. According to this theory, all buildings were designed to still look imposing even if they fell apart. This was a way of ensuring that even if the Nazi empire fell one day, its legacy would remain forever. The other interesting thing is that some of the materials used in the Germania project were literally stolen. Speer wanted to use marble for his buildings, but Germany did not have enough of this material. So whole trains full of marble were taken from Italy. Even forced labor from concentration camps was used. A third lesser-known fact is that although the Germania project was never fully realized, some elements of it can still be found in Berlin. For example, the building of the Reich Ministry of Aviation, now the Ministry of Finance, is one of the few buildings that were built according to Speer's plans. We can also still see the huge concrete blocks that were originally intended as test samples for the construction of the Volkschau. As we have seen, the Germania project was indeed a giant plan. It represented the ambitions and ideals of the Nazi regime, its quest for permanence and dominance. But like the regime itself, Germania was too ambitious, and its vision was never fully realized. When looking at this project, it is important to realize how architecture can reflect, but also shape, the ideals and values of a society. Germania was not just a set of buildings, it was a physical manifestation of an ideology. Although it was never completed, its legacy is still with us. It is also important to highlight the damage that the Germania project caused. The homes destroyed, the cultural monuments lost, the resources expended, these are all consequences worth recalling. They remind us of how far a construction project can go when it is driven by ideology rather than respect for people and place. Finally, it is worth remembering that although the Germania project is known for its unrealized plans, some elements of it have survived. These traces remind us not only of the ambitions of the Nazi regime, but also of the possibilities and limitations of architecture. Germania has become a legend, a ghost of the past that still reminds us of that time. Although the Germania project was never realized as it was intended, its traces can still be found in Berlin and its legacy remains strong. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it, subscribe to our channel and click the bell so you don't miss our next videos. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next video about fascinating and controversial projects from the history of architecture and design.